Hi, everyone. Welcome to this edition of the Hump Day Hiatus. It's Wednesday, as always. And here we are with Meg Bradbury, all the way from LA. Uh, Meg and I met uh, through our Body Trust Certification Program. She's a fabulous, fabulous human. Uh, she's going to be here today to chat with us for the next 45 minutes or so and uh, keeping in with the theme of September and the core element of body trust that we're focusing on. We're going to be talking about, you know, how we can kind of allow and uh, make space and embody for more pleasure in our lives, um, some more joy and probably what gets in the way of all of that stuff. Uh, so Meg is uh, just about a certified body trust provider, just a few little pieces of paperwork, and then she's she's all ready to rock. Um, and then we also, um, she's she's got uh, background and training as a holistic nutritionist, as well as a folk um, or community herbalist. And oh yeah, yoga teacher training. She's doing her yoga teacher training right now as well. So her and I have a few things in common with how we've kind of come to this path and uh, journey that we're on. So without further ado, hi, Meg. Sorry, hey, my cat Dennis. is, <laughs> she's getting in on this too. <laughs> um, and also for those of you listening in, things tend to, uh, F-bombs tend to drop when, when, when Meg and I chat. So shit's going to get real. <laughs> Uh, so you want to uh, share a little bit about yourself and how, you know, you've come to doing all of the things that you do, what you're, what you're passionate about and, and why? Yeah. Thank you for having me. First off, I love your work and the work you're putting out in the world. And I'm so happy to be a body trust provider with you. We are in such good company and oh. we'll have to study about um, the police video that we made with Anna. Yes. The police officer. <laughs> came to this work in 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 a way that a lot of people tend to is through my own experience with disordered eating and an eating disorder and um getting pretty seriously um sick and eventually figuring out how sick I was with the help of treatment team and friends and family and um figuring out that it wasn't me that was broken. It was the culture that was broken and wanting to help people understand that. Um, so that's the short story of how I came to body trust. And then, you know, the, the rabbit hole of, of, Oh, Oh, Isabel Fox and Duke, what she's doing. Oh, summer in and what she's doing. And then it's like, then I found Dana and Hillary and then I found all these people. So it was like this yeah. magic party <laughs> that, that um, I discovered everybody was invited to and um, it changed my life. Definitely. For sure. So that's how I came to Body Trust. It's a very short story of it. Yeah, I, it kind of, my experience kind of echoes that too, is like, you know, you, once you, once you find one person, you, you know, the whole thing just kind of opens up and you're like, oh, it's a whole other world out there. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You know, there, there are people who, who aren't shaming bodies, you know, who aren't telling people that they need to lose weight, you know, who are open and accepting folks of wherever they're at on their journey in life. Right. It's, it's kind of a clusterfuck when you realize that there are people who love you. <laughs> it's just, it's really that simple who accept you and who love you and who love themselves, you know, where they are and that simplifying it, but it really yeah. changed everything. It yeah. It's, it's almost like there's this whole other energy that I find it takes to show up in the world, you know, and that's coming from me, someone who holds a ton of body privilege. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's, there's just, there's so much energy that it takes to, <clears throat> to be out there and you know to put on this face and be this person and these things mm -hmm. and when you can 
you can sit in a space with folks who aren't wearing any of those masks, right? right. And you take yours off, right. right? It's just this this exhale and this ease, you know? I was like, oh my God, this is what like living, sorry, my cat is taking my computer for a ride. <laughs> He's finding pleasure massaging herself right now. Um, yeah, you know, it's just like this whole exhale and um, allows things to, to really open. And I found, you know, it just made it so much easier for me to come into myself and, um, and start accepting myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's a project, right? I mean, it's, Mm. it's for me, um, I think once I saw people with less, far less privilege than I have, um, sitting more solidly in their space and within themselves and and really centered in the body and the mind that they were in then it became clear to me that i number one i'm really lucky yeah number two that i had work to do and i had mentors that i could turn to um it's it's I can't say enough of the idea of community Mm -hmm. within the work that we do and the way that people um, have accepted each other themselves and me into this, this community without question. And I able to do that with other people too, because I was given the opportunities to just step in and be among and ask questions and, and, um, and learn too with people who held space for me. And it's so easy for me to turn around and do the same for other people now. And that's why one of the reasons why I wanted to work with other people on this stuff, because I was given set right. and I was told if the yeah. community aspect is, is the most important thing for me. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I completely agree with you. I mean, there's, you know, so so many, so many people that have done the body trust training, um, you know, have just the other day, you know, I had a little chat going with a few folks from my cohort and, and we were just like, I kind of can't believe how much I love each and every one of you. I know, I know. You know, like, I was just like, and we got together for a week, you know, we were together for seven days. And, and it, I was just like, how did I have life before these humans, no, it's you know, so- who see me without any of these pretenses and without any judgment um, and hold that space, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. for you to explore to, you know, to, to kind of work through wherever wherever you are. And it's, it's kind of miraculous. Like I, there's nowhere else in, in, in my life that I've truly um, had experienced that feeling before. I absolutely agree. Absolutely. And also part of it is letting ourselves experience it. Right? Yeah. Like if you guard yourself in that community, you're not going to get as much out of it. So it's, it's, um, it, it makes it easy to be able to let yourself go. Yeah. To fully yeah. Immersed. Uh, totally yeah. I oh, remember well. yeah I remember um when I first kind of started doing doing the body trust stuff um I thought I was having a mental breakdown yeah I was like what the fuck like all of these things that I've believed my whole entire life about how I'm supposed to behave show up be right. um you know is all fabricated Mm -hmm. and so now what what is there you know like what is this I don't even know like where is my place in the world and who who am I and I also um you know at the point of kind of meshing those two pieces of myself like my so much of my brain was still rooted and thinking in ways that were shameful and blaming you know myself for everything and then I had this other you know compassionate piece coming in and then this piece that's like wanting to seek pleasure and joy and not have to do things the hard way like we're told right um 
and just the two of them clashing, I was like, am do you like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Literally felt it's like my like brain was melting. Like, did you feel that sense of, of almost, almost like, you crashed, right? Like I crashed in my eating disorder when I realized I f I'm going to die if I don't make a change. Yeah. Or I'm going to be brain dead if I don't make a change or anything dramatic. I mean, it was super, super dramatic. Of course it is. You're, yeah. you're fucking with your whole sense of being, right? Totally. So, th so you crash and then you find this world you didn't know about luckily happily gracefully all the things thank god i found it and yeah then you sort of rebuild yourself with the with the help of people who've gone before you or people who are working alongside you or people who want to come up and do this work it's 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 like a i don't want to say it's like you're a whole new person because you're not really you're still the same person but you have this enlightenment and awakening that is is remarkable it feel, felt to me very, very much it continues to feel like a a rebuilding of self i'm 55 you know yeah. and, and i came to eating disorder late um and to be able to say oh i'm so excited to be rebuilding my life here at 55 it's pretty fucking amazing yeah it's it's so strong and it's so um so big that it's it i don't i feel like i don't have a choice but it's also the most amazing thing i'm so effusive <laughs> fantastic it is. It is. it's been such a gift <laughs> yeah it's like the way i kind of think of it is like you know find it's like this this winding path this road of finding my way back to myself right it's back it's back and it's new right it's yes. a strange to me of of being a whole new thing with your whole old beautiful self like yeah the self you had buried or hidden yeah when you were trying to be somebody else totally you... totally and that's why i'm like reclaiming the wild for me that's exactly what that's all about i love that also i love just the, the words reclaiming the wild it's perfect yeah so it's like you know those pieces of yourselves i think hillary uses the 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 term orphans those pieces of yourself that you've orphaned um yes. and and really you know coming to a place of understanding and deep knowing that it's those pieces it's that wisdom it's that uniqueness it's that you-ness yeah that makes you fucking awesome yeah and right gonna, if everybody hears like piano in the background i'm working and i work at a school and it's music <laughs> music <laughs> So, I can hear it. And I was like, that's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what they'll play, but hopefully something jaunty. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> um, so I, I'd love for you to share a little bit with us about um, uh, your, your journey with orthorexia, mm -hmm. um, which will maybe land us at some of the videos that you've been doing. We'll see where the conversation goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, do we need to define orthorexia? Perhaps? Yeah, sure. Let's 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 do that. Yeah, let's let's create a little container. Okay, so orthorexia to me is an unhealthy obsession with eating clean and pure. Um, it's it's kind of a way of life here in Los Angeles. Um, it's it's very normalized, yeah. and therefore it's it's very tricky to actually realize that it's happening. And I think that you shared the history too. So I don't know yeah. what orthorexia is for you. Yeah, no, no, same. I, yeah, that definition's bang on for me. And, um, you know, I think about um, the impact, you know, you, okay, it's an obsession with, you know, eating clean and eating pure. And, um, you know, what that did to my relationships, my sense of self, um, my quality of life, you know, my, my stress levels and, and, you know, fixating and all of that sort of stuff on and obsessing, as you said. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, like it, it, and, and the most fucked up part of it for me is that this is something that everyone in our culture is aspiring to right now. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Yes. We're, we're, 
like if you're you're not a superhuman if you don't do the superfoods and you don't feed your children the superfoods yeah. and you don't present in a certain way and you don't your shopping cart doesn't look a certain way. I mean, it's all about presentation and posturing, yeah. um, but it's it's so it's an it's it's an aspiration. I don't know what else to call it, but it really is something that you're held up for. And we talked a little off recording about how. Um, how it's also very ego driven. And for yeah. me, you know, when I was in the thick of it, when I had cut out everything there was to cut out, and that's, I don't, again, maybe your experience, but once I cut out, you know, dairy and eggs, it just went down this thing of like, oh, I should need oil. Uh oh, there go the nuts and seeds. Wow, avocado sucks. And it, you know, really, <laughs> everything was at one point I think I was eating maybe four things yeah. <laughs> because everything else, it just everything got progressively worse and worse and worse and I got more and more freaked out about yeah was this food gonna make me sick or was this food going to eventually kill me and it yeah. got very serious and so but at the same time people see you doing this and it's you're just held up in in this way that um that makes you feel really good about it. And well, yeah, because people praise you, right? People praise you and you for how you look. Yeah. Something. And, and, you know, I was, I was ultra running. I was doing um, um, endurance marathons, which is anything over 26 miles. So I went, you know, 100 mile race training and things like that. And so I was doing that. I was obsessively exercising, but that looked really great to people. Like, oh my gosh, you're doing this great thing what's fucking great. I was injured all the time. So I yeah. so doing this thing by running all the time. And then you're, Oh, I see you eating your kale. That's so great. And then they'd ask me to diagnose them. You know, like I've got this lung condition. I'd be like, well, yeah, what you here's what have, you need to eat. You need to have your chaga mushroom tea Yeah, because it'll help. Like I became some sort of like guru, but I let myself become that guru. Yeah. It was really tied into my ego and my sense of superiority and, and the fact that people needed me for something. So it's not oh. only like an eating disorder, it's also a, a an ego thing. It's, it's such a weird disease. It's so <laughs> weird. I, I, I wish I could even explain how I felt when I was in it. Um, and we can, and this ties into the whole pleasure sex thing. It's like, you'd think that I was in the best shape, best shape of my life. Right. Um, the healthiest of my life. In fact, both of those things are completely untrue um, in hindsight, but I wouldn't even let myself feel pleasure. I couldn't feel pleasure in, in the fact that I was in that body or the fact that I could right. run all those miles or the fact that I would get up and, and, you know, and immediately poop because that was an indicator of my work. You know, I couldn't take any play. I wouldn't let anybody touch me. I wouldn't feel yeah. good about anybody looking at me. And so I, here I was in this shape that everybody aspired to, and I couldn't stand myself. Yeah. I couldn't at all accept any sort of worth or merit or goodness. I just had to posture it, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. And it's, and it, you know, it, coming up for me is like this idea of the self-improvement project. Yes. Right? Is that if we're not constantly bettering ourselves or aspiring to be better, then we're less valuable, we're less worthy of love and, you know, of of existing, basically. Right? right? We're less right. worthy of taking up sta space if we're not pursuing these these things that have been put up on pedestals by 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 who? People who make money off of us, you, you right. know, like I don't know. Right. Right. It's, um, it's really a clusterfuck and it's, it's very tricky, I think, to understand that it is a clusterfuck. Yeah. Um, and what, how did you get out of it? Can I ask you that? How did I get out of it? That's a really great question. I, oh, actually, so, so I also, I had binge eating disorder. Yeah. Yep. And then I went to school for holistic nutrition. <laughs> yep. Right. And yeah. then I was like, oh, my God, my binge eating disorder is gone because I'm eating all of these things that I'm drawn to for my body that my body loves and feels so good on. And, you know, kale chips and smoothies and all that shit, too. Um, I remember <laughs> I was working at a vegan restaurant and I remember experiencing kimchi for the first time. 
And I was like, oh my God, this is the healthiest stuff ever. I'm going to eat all of it because <laughs> then I'll be healthier. <laughs> Right, exactly. It was a fucking disaster. I could barely even go to work. I was like so gassy, so <laughs> and like, and like the worst odor you've ever encountered in your life. And I finally, so this other chick that I worked with was also a holistic nutritionist. And I was like, dude, what is happening to my body? And so, of course, we're like, oh, let's see. What did you eat? What did you eat? And I was like, oh, I had some kimchi. She's like, how much? I was like, like a bowlful. <laughs> but it's good. It's probiotics, right? Holy fuck! And the the burning of the of the the heat of it is probably great to stoke your digestive fire. Totally, so great. great, so great, just brutal. Anyway, I don't even know why that popped into my head, but I was so yeah, just so I I you know had found this new diet this new lifestyle yeah. of you know being healthy and 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 there was a component of it um i had suffered from really really bad um digestive stuff ever since i was a little girl even actually when i was when i was born um and um and so i i started you know seeing naturopaths and playing around with with foods and supplements and different cleanses and all this sort of stuff and and i did find some relief right so i just like whew, so that was like the be all and the end all you know i can change lives <laughs> yeah with, right. with what i'm doing you know um, That's kind of what you're taught, though, if I, if you don't totally. mind acting, it's kind of what you're taught in this. I, we both know each other, the schools that we went to. Yeah. And it, it's sort of like you're given this power. Yeah. And mostly it's just spouting off the latest study uh -huh. without a lot of, you know, background. It, yeah. it, it, the fact that we took all this as, as sacred and as pass honorable and as it, it's just it's kind of interesting how it's presented and we all yeah, do it. I mean, totally it. and like one of the one of the most fucked up things to me about it is that it it completely you know like you do it or at least to me anyway it was like I was taking care of myself yes yeah. right but now looking back I was like I was brutalizing myself yeah you know like I was completely disconnected from my body my yeah. I was like no because this is what my brain says you need this is what we're going to do here's the schedule here are the things you know so there was a complete disconnection to yeah. my body even though what I was telling myself and what I thought was that I was I was helping myself yeah, yeah. but I really wasn't even with myself at all no you and know it's if you did this thing where where you were convincing yourself you felt better, better than what? I don't know. But it's like, oh, I've had, you know, X days of chia seeds or I've had, I've made, you know, this specific smoothie every morning for this time or I'm scraping my tongue constantly or, you know, <laughs> changes that we made. And you're supposed to be feeling all this difference. And I said I was feeling, like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling better than I ever have. And I really wasn't. I wasn't feeling yeah. That different, or I was feeling not great yeah. at all. I didn't yeah. have a lot of energy. I didn't have a lot of um, healing. Like I was constantly getting injured, as I said. So, and I I couldn't heal from those things very easily. And so I told myself, I am feeling better, but I don't think I'm doing. I have done this long enough. So once I have another year of this kind of yes. healing, this you know specificity under my belt, then I'll start really feeling it. Totally. And I kept waiting but it just it, it it's it's all kind of a lie <laughs> yeah it, it, and I'm not saying that that it's not right to eat nutritious food and and not saying that at all or to try new things for your health or to be cognizant of when foods make your body not feel great or when they make your body feel great but at the same time to assume that if everybody eats this one way then yeah. they will experience like this transformation and to perfectly healthy, perfectly immortal person. Yeah. Um, it's just not true. It's, no. it's, it, it's really um, unconscionable. <laughs> Actually, yeah. totally. I don't know really anybody that ended up believing that they felt 
that much better yeah. through an orthorexic yeah. sort of background. And it's interesting to how though, when you're in those moments, you know, I think part, part of it fueled by the disconnection, part of it f- fueled by the, you know, the surge that you're getting from people's compliments, from feeling like you're in control of something, you know, you're doing something right, you know, like we talk about in Body Trust, how it's really difficult to tease out the high that you get from doing something good and doing something right and well, and appearing successful at it versus, you know, whether it's the actual changes that you've made right. that are creating that feel good. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, and approval too. Yeah. I had a complicated uh, childhood and one of the things that my parents were always disappointed um, in me about was that I was a fat kid. And even now, even, even at that point when I kind of embarked on, on my eating disorder path, um, my one of my greatest things was that my parents were like, oh you look so great and again i'm in my 50s and that 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 kind of thing was still so important to me yeah it's also part of it yeah totally a lot of it was size based you know it wasn't just feeling healthy and eating healthy foods it's that i lost a lot of weight when i when i started you know eating healthy and exercising a lot and and i think that was the biggest reason why why people were giving me attention in the beginning. Right. Yeah. You know, you were cashing in on that thin privilege. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I think like, it was so interesting. I, I actually, you know, when I had kind of thought that I had gone through the binge eating stuff and come out on the other side, I realized years and years down the road um, at a Be Nourished retreat, actually, that um, my life had just become one giant restriction. Mm-hmm. Right? So I thought like, oh, no, I've got this thing licked. No big deal. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, but wait. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, <laughs> when was the last time I experienced pleasure for the sake of pleasure, yeah. joy yeah. for the sake of joy, you know, was, and, and everything had just become one giant restriction. And right. still Even a lot of those ortho. Right? Yeah, everything. totally. Pleasure yeah. becomes kind of like a sign of weakness. Yes. Like the more you can, the more what the fuck is with away, that? The stronger person you are. Like I don't yeah. need, not even going out with people. I could stay home a lot, and yeah. And if it, it was, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's restricting of a lot of things, not just what you ate, not yeah. just. Um, yeah, that's such a good point. Like it would be a Saturday night, and I remember being in my like little one bedroom basement apartment with literally pounds and pounds of produce on my counter. And, you know, I would, like, wash it in my sink in the solution. And then I'd put it in the fucking juicer. <laughs> but, no, then when I, <laughs> but then when I found out that, like, juice was no good for you anymore after a day. I know. I was like, well, now I can't. I, <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm like, did you have, what kind of juicer did you have? Because I'm like, it could only be a macerating juicer because the blah, blah juicer wasn't the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and then the you had center I, I had, I had the blah, blah one because I couldn't afford. <laughs> oh my God. Your juice was, <laughs> your crappy juice was even crappier. It was my crappy juice was even crappier. I was destroying the cells with the blades of my juicer in the produce. You are not even worthy as a person. I can't believe no. you did that. I didn't I'm have the right binder, so oh god, I didn't have the for <laughs> speeds that could break down the fuck. I don't know what. It's like everything becomes <laughs> such a bullshit thing, right? Yeah, it's so right. You can have the right like produce cleaner. It's like it's not apple cider vinegar anymore. You dumb shit. It's this thing, and yeah, everything be totally like you weren't doing it good enough. You weren't doing it right enough. Yeah. You had to find the exact thing that was going to change everything. Yeah. Even fruit fucking wash. 
looks like or, or or here's another thing i couldn't i wouldn't even let myself i had terrible cramps back when i was getting my i had a period when i didn't get my period and i thought i was going through menopause because i'm old enough for that but it wasn't it was me just not having enough body weight and so when i got more body fat i got my period back was, anyway that's a segue but so I'd get cramps and I wouldn't let myself take anything over the counter because that was bad. Right. So everything became suspect. Everything. Even yes. like toilet paper you use. Like maybe I shouldn't even use toilet paper. Everything might have bleach in it. Maybe I should just do rags. I really <laughs> got stuck to that. It's so, <laughs> so great. Or, or, you know, like, uh, okay, I'm not going to use tampons because they're bleached. Okay, I'll get a diva cup. What's the diva cup made out of? I don't know. Oh, my God. It's, it's just everything. Everything. I have to dry brush my body. That takes me an hour in the morning. Okay, I'll just go into work late. <laughs> it's a lot of rules and a lot of, you This know, is knowing laughter, by the way. So. <laughs> no. It wasn't just. It was I know. Just, so, like, what the fuck did we do for fun? What fun? That was fun. Dry brushing was the most fun I had in years. Saturday night juice fest. <laughs> I know. Or like, <laughs> let's go see how fast the cucumber grinds up in the Vitamix. Like, oh, okay. I didn't go fast enough. Oh, throw that Vitamix by the other one. I'm <laughs> <was> so fucked up. <laughs> Oh, so how how <laughs> <laughs> or so how did we like sheets and stuff? It, it, right, or your fucking water filter on your shower? It, I could just go on and on. I and know. On. I once gave so this guy that I was dating in like the peak of the guy this, you let yourself go on a date, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, he, um, I gave him, I gave him beet juice for the first time and it was like early on in our relationship. So we weren't going down like the poo conversation roads yet. And, uh, <laughs> that second date when you're orthorexic. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. That's definitely <laughs> and then like months later, I was talking about having a beet poo. <laughs> and he was like the relief on his face. He, got, he was like bleeding. <laughs> anyway. That is so great. Anyway, bless him. Yeah. You know, yeah. And like these people, like, you know, walked beside me on these journeys and like thank God for them because, you know, they they weren't like me. Right. And I think that's why. I was so drawn to them is because they didn't give a shit about any of that, you know? Right. That's, that's like, interesting, I, actually. That you yeah, were they were like, I just want to, like, fun. do fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember telling you know? my family, my family was so patient, let me tell you, with every step of the way, they were probably, you know, the eye roll emoji, probably the whole time. But they, yeah. you know, my daughter a piece of this was also that I was so sick that I started, you know, fat shaming and food shaming my family. Yeah. And that's a side conversation. Maybe we could have another time um, and how my daughter's healed from that. And it was right. Shit, right. It was, it really was a real thing. I got fat shamed as a kid and I said, I'm never going to do that. <laughs> then I, <laughs> Fat shamed my daughter and food shamed my daughter and it, 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 it anyway that's a whole other thing but they were so patient with me um like hey kids we're gonna oil pull today or you know <laughs> i'm taking i can't nobody can eat seeds so no seeds in the house and they're yeah. like all right i mean it's just sort of I, i'm really grateful to my family <laughs> just yeah. put it that way because they yeah. were with me they stuck with me they didn't question it because they didn't understand what was going on, even though they knew that something was going on, especially as it progressed. But they also really held me when I said, I'm sick. I'm, I got to work my way out of this. And like, okay, we're yeah. with you. And so yeah. grateful. It takes a village, you know, it does. Absolutely. Take that with yeah. Um, and I wonder, like, for me, it was very, um, 
it was like there were so many seeds that were being planted um again i'm sure people you know a select few folks looking in were like oh jesus you know like okay yeah no problem go do that thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know right. knowing like okay. i was i was losing my mind yeah um you know but and and so i feel like there were you know, there were all of these seeds that were planted that I just was completely unconscious of and didn't notice. And then all of a sudden, one day, I was just like, oh, my God. What am I what am I doing? Yeah. yeah. Like, everything is passing me by. Yes. You know, yes. life is passing me by. Yeah. I'm worried about all these things that I ultimately can't control. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm and I'm completely disconnecting from my body and my experience in this world because, A, I don't even feel worthy of having one. Yeah. You yes, know, yeah. so like, how do we, how do, how do, you know, and, and that was like, okay, this is, this is bad. It's really bad. And, you know, the rose colored glasses have come off, but where, where do we go from here? You know, it was like, I didn't even, I had no idea that all of these things in until that moment, I was like, Okay, now looking back, I see and yet I, you know, totally ignored it and here it is so valuable to me today. There were so many pieces that just kind of came together. Mm -hmm. Am I totally frozen? Um, you froze a little bit, but you're back. Okay. Um, yeah, so it was just, you know, living very unconscious um and then all of a sudden something clicked yeah 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 i think that's it i i don't know i've thought about it a lot i'm not quite sure exactly for me what made it click but there mm -hmm. was a definite moment of awakening it was for me it was i got i was training for a hundred mile race i was a month out from the race i got injured and i couldn't run anymore i tore a muscle in a couple places and I not only could I not do the race, but I couldn't run. And, right. um, and the feeling, the helpless feeling of that announcement of that realization made me feel like I didn't know what I was living for. In the meantime, my daughter's going to college. This is the summer before my daughter's going to college. I had a lot of exciting life changes happening. And all I could think about was, I can't run. And I'm fucked. Nice. And so that feeling was so scary, how despondent I felt and how helpless I felt and how I didn't have a direction in my life. That one thing made me feel, um, that woke me up. It's like, I'm sick. I really, right. really need some help um if that's the one thing that was gonna make me feel like I didn't have anything to live for yeah and so that's what did it and you know the scariness of that moment that I realized that was enough to to make me start looking for another way yeah so yeah I get that moment like boom and it's, yeah. it's not like it's failing after that it was it was a lot of um struggle and a lot of tears like what's my next life but yet at the same time I knew I was ready to take it on yeah, yeah. totally and I love um I'm not sure if part of kind of taking that on for you was these videos that you've done <laughs> um so for anyone listening you can find Meg at lamplight space um is there an underscore in there somewhere lamplight.space instead of .com it's space um, and my Instagram is uh, lamplight.space and the Perfect. videos on both um, yeah what I would do early on and even now still because it's still a path right it's not like it's always easy um, there are things totally. that I'm still very um, I have to do like I have to kind of make myself do things sometimes um, but yeah. in the beginning it'd be like okay I need to eat some bread and I started you know I would start taking a picture of that on Instagram just to make it public because that was part of my recovery was talking about it and being open yeah. and um, so I'd eat some bread so eventually it just became like okay let's get my friends together and eat some candy because I haven't fucking had a piece of 
goddamn candy in so long that, <laughs> yeah. that I'm going to do this and celebrate it and make it a party. So I decided to make some videos and that's what you're talking about. They're pretty fun. And I kind of yeah. want to do cereal. Like I used to hear when I was sick, I used to go to, cause I would only go to certain grocery stores, you know, like I won't mention them, but you know, of course. I'm talking about, mm -hmm. um, and I'd only go to those and I, and for fun, like a Friday night, I'd go to a conventional grocery store and go to the cereal aisle and mock everything. <laughs> that was my entertainment. <laughs> so like, oh, like, you I'm going to shame you all. <laughs> I'm right, nobody in the aisle with me. I'm like, honeycomb. What the fuck? But anyway, so, I, so now I'm going to go like maybe get some Fruit Loops and some Count Chocula and yeah. do that next thing with friends because I haven't, I really, I don't even like cereal, but I'm going to eat it because it yeah. sounds fun. So that, yeah, that's a thing. So yeah, if you, if you can make it a party, it's, it's sweet. Super awesome. Sweet. Yeah. Start reclaiming some of that, that joy for our lives. Yes. Yes. Candy's fun. Totally. I, mean, really I bought Pop stuff. Rocks the other day and I thought of you. You inspired that. I haven't had a pot. In fact, I have to have Pop Rocks. What? Yeah. You know what's really good? You... Abba Zabba. Do you remember Abba Zabba? No. It was like, of course, it's chewy. Everything I choose is chewy. But it's <laughs> it's like a taffy. It's a long taffy. Oh, the white and blue. The and white and pink. Butter and... In it. Yes. Oh. And it's peanut butter. And if you dip that in peanut butter. <laughs> well, yeah, it can't be bad. Can't be bad. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, yeah, anything with peanut butter. But apple apples and peanut butter. Kid taught me that. Yeah. So candy is, is, it's fun to rediscover. Bottle caps. Do you remember bottle caps? Mm, totally. Really, bottle caps are great. Dum Dums. Dum -dums I love the fun are... dip. Yes. Yeah. Except I would forego that I just put my finger in it. You know, oh, I really love the popular. stick. It was my favorite part. Could you eat the stick? Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. Let's make a list. We should do, you and I should do a candy thing of things that you remember. Deal. But I used to, like, in fifth grade, um, it was a thing at lunch for the moms, because the moms back in the 70s always put your lunch together in a bag. And we would get, my mom wouldn't make me lunch at all. But so I wouldn't do this, but other moms would do it, and I would just take it from David. <laughs> Right. Um, my friends a box of jello and that's it. It was a dry box of jelly. You just stuck your finger in over and over. <laughs> that felt really great, actually. That's and you go to class right for really <laughs> Right, right, exactly. It could be. That's what I so I didn't I forewent the stick and fun dip and went straight for the finger. Yeah. Cut out the middle, man. And hashtag straight for the finger. <laughs> Well, we could take that discussion. And right. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow at noon here on the Thursday edition. <laughs> Thanks for, the finger. for that right. hashtag. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, okay. Well, unfortunately, we've reached our time. We'll have to talk about, besides fun dip and fingers, we'll have to talk about pleasure <laughs> and sex and stuff. And aging. Let's do it again. I'd love to talk I to you. I would love nothing more. Yeah. 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 But let me, one last thing since we're ending. Yes. And I do want to say that if anybody is 40 and over and, and you're, you're coming to or coming out of either an eating disorder or disordered eating or fucked up body image or, you know, menopausal crap or bullshit aging ism any of those things, please just come email me, talk to me. I'm so into that conversation. Um, like I said, I am 55. I am rocking 55. I am so into my cronehood and so into how positive and affirming it is that if, if you need anybody to send you some positive words about it, I am totally your person. I'm here for you. Um, it's, it. it's not talked about a lot in body, body positivity. Is no, it it's absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And it's so it's, important. It's, yeah. I'm really, yeah, really glad good. that you're talking about it and that, you know, you're, you're out there doing this work now and people can find you. Mm, yeah. I'm excited to be here and excited to know people like you. It's like, it was so, so fun to meet you. I know. My 
my tribe. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So again, for those of you uh, listening or who are going to be checking out the replay, um, you can find Meg at www.lamplight.space and on Instagram, lamplight.space as well. Yes. Thank you so much for being here, Meg. And we are so, so doing this again. Okay. I can't wait. I love you. And love you. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, to this edition of the Hump Day Hiatus, your pause from diet culture and body shaming shit. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye.